All right, so I wanna welcome you all to our webinar, For Nonprofits, How to Drive Online Marketing Results with Constant Contact. Let's go ahead and get started. If any of you are already familiar with our guide, it's called Making Sense of Online Mar Marketing for Nonprofits. You know that being successful online with your online marketing starts by understanding the fundamentals and using key tools together to help you to build a strong foundation. Of course, that means using those key tools together to do things like keep your community informed, keep them active, engaged, and simply grow your organization. Now, of course, managing your online marketing efforts can feel cumbersome when you have to jump between multiple channels and tools like we're talking about. At Constant Contact, our goal is actually to eliminate that cumbersome feeling and make it easy for you to be successful. That's why we provide a suite of easy to use tools and marketing advice that gets you where you need to be, all in one place. Now, today's webinar is not a demo, but it's all about the tools that are available in Constant Contact and how you can use them together to drive results for your nonprofit organization. I wanna go ahead and take a look at a quick video that just previews some of the tools we're gonna to chat about today. You're just a few clicks away now. That's right, just a few clicks from diving into the Constant Contact Marketing Universe that will help you get real results for your business fast. At the center of it all is our results-driving email marketing with a drag-and-drop, one-and-done editor. All the tools, templates, and integrations to simplify how you create and send great-looking emails that stand out in the inbox and keep you engaged with your customers. But it's not just about creating emails, it's about results. So whether you're looking to grow your email list and connect with new customers, run A-B tests, or track performance, it's all right here. And of course, our email marketing comes loaded with automation features because doing things manually is so 2020. Looking to go beyond the inbox? We thought so. We've got social media marketing tools to get the word out to your fans and prospects. And you can see your results all in one place. And if you don't have a website or aren't crazy about the one you've got, we have the tools to create a website you'll love and an online store that will help you sell more in no time. We're excited to have you join our family of customers, a proud group of hustlers and small business owners who are finding new ways to stay connected with their customers and drive more business every single day. And just like every Constant Contact customer, you'll get full access to our award-winning marketing advisors whenever you need a hand or just want some good old-fashioned advice. Ready to get to it? Nice, we are too. Now let's get started. All right, so with all of that in mind, I just, let me make sure my screen is showing. It doesn't look like it is. There we go. So with all of that in mind, I just wanna kind of walk you through our agenda and show you how we're gonna be talking about the tools today. And we're gonna talk about them in three areas. We're gonna talk about tools that will help you to establish a brand. Then we'll talk about the tools that you can use to raise funds with constant contact. And then last but not least, grow your organization. Now, before we get into all the details, allow me to just introduce myself. My name is Stephanie French, and I'm the content manager for webinars here at Constant Contact. I've been here for almost 11 years here in a couple of weeks, so I'm very knowledgeable in email and online marketing. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the tools we have that help you to establish your brand. Now, I would like to take just a minute to actually run a poll here before we dive in too much. I would love to see who all is in the audience. So I would love to know how long has your organization been running? So it should be up on your screen now. And if you could choose an answer for me, that would be wonderful. Maybe it's less than a year, one to four years, five to nine years, or 10 plus years. All right, we've got a lot in the audience so far who've answered 10 plus years. That's amazing, that's awesome. A couple of people in the less than one year, a few in the one to four, and a few in the five to nine. So we'll give everyone just a, another minute or two to share your answers with us here in the group. 
And Allison, I see your answer in the the chat, 10 plus years, that's great. Perfect, so let's go ahead and close out those results and then we'll share them there on the screen. Show you who all's in the audience and joining us for today. So we had 84% 84, 84 of you who answered, 10 plus years, 9% in the five to nine, and then a few of you in the first two categories, less than a year, and then one to four years. So that's awesome, and that kind of helps us to shape how we're gonna talk about the tools today. So we'll go ahead and take that poll down. All right, so let's talk a little bit about branding. And I know as a nonprofit, especially for those of you who have been around for quite a while, Branding is not your first thought, but quality branding is an important part of helping you to do the most good. Your nonprofit branding really influences the way that your public see, that the public sees the work that your organization does, and it really helps you to stand out from other nonprofits. So a great brand is gonna be easily recogni recognizable, and it's gonna help you to make an instant connection with people for them to understand what it is you do and the impact you're making in the world and your, and your community. So branding is, of course, everything from your visual identity to how people are perceiving you in their interactions on and offline. Now, a logo, like all of you probably already have, is really the cornerstone for your brand. For those of you who answered less than a year or even one to four years, make sure you've got a logo that's giving the right first impression of your brand that influences people right from the start. If you've been around for a while and you've had a logo that's been around for a while as well, I would encourage you to sit down and maybe uh, poll your audience, your supporters, your volunteers, and think about the impression that your current logo is making, because maybe it's time to refresh or maybe even recreate your logo to help you stand out and make a big splash in the community for your cause. This brings us to our really cool tool, which is our logo maker. You can easily create a logo within Constant Contact, and you don't have to have any design experience right within your account. Our logo maker uses AI or artificial intelligence to help you design a great looking logo. You're currently gonna find it under the website tab in your account, but you'll start by inputting the name of your organization. You can add in a tagline and then use the features that help you to customize every element. We see just a small snapshot of what you can do in there to customize it. You can customize the color, the fonts, the icons, and get, the, get them just the way you want them to look. Now, once you have your branding and your logo in place, you really wanna make sure you're using that logo and branding everywhere in all of your online and offline marketing materials. That includes your websites. Now, often enough, I hear people say, well, we don't need a website, we're on social media or whatever the case may be. Your website is what should really be serving as the home base for all of your online marketing activities. On a personal level, if you think about one of the first things you do when you wanna investigate an organization, Maybe you're thinking about donating or volunteering, or maybe you need to use their services. Typically, you're gonna look for a website so that you can learn more, and your potential supporters and clients are gonna be doing the same thing. So with your website, you've gotta make sure you're putting your best foot forward, answering the questions that people will have about your organization, whether you're trustworthy, what you do for the community, about your cause and things like that. You really wanna show them why they'd wanna support your cause in the first place. You also wanna give them the option right there, if you're not already, to make a donation. And in terms of putting your best foot forward, you wanna make sure that your website is mobile responsive. And if you're not sure quite what that means, that means if you look at your website on a desktop computer, it'll be nice and wide, it'll fit the screen. And if you open up that same page on your website on a mobile device, it's gonna get a little bit skinnier. And the proper way is that no one should have be having to scroll left and right on your mo their mobile device to view your website because that's not a great experience. Now your website is also where we suggest you collect email addresses from supporters and your constituents would need your, your services anyway. This brings us to our AI powered website builder. This really allows you to quickly and easily create and customize your website. And that is gonna be optimized for search engines. And by default, you are gonna be creating a great looking mobile responsive website. Now, if you're using our website tool, like I was saying, it's automatically going to come with a sign-up form that allows you to start getting people on your email list. 
you'll just want to click into it and make a few customizations to fit what it is that people will get from your emails. We'll talk more about growing your list a little bit later. And with all of the tools that we're going to talk about today, you're going to get some insights and reports, and that way you can determine what's working for your marketing and what's not. The insights are really going to allow you to make adjustments to things like your websites, your emails, and any of your other strategies to improve those results. For your website specifically, this is just a small snapshot. You're gonna be able to see the traffic coming to your site, where it's coming from, the session duration or how long they're spending on your site, and then what pages they're visiting as well. That's gonna tell you a lot of powerful information. Now, in our guide that I mentioned earlier, Rachel shared a link in the chat window. Getting found online is really an important part of being successful online for your organization. When someone performs a search for something you offer or something related to your cause, you simply want to make sure your organization shows up. And of course, your website is just one of those pieces that will show up in those search results. And that's why we suggest you use SEO or search engine optimization to help you there. We have an SEO tool. It is an add-on for $15 a month, which, by the way, we're going to talk about packages more at the end. But you can simply put in your, your website address, and it's going to check the content on your website and provide you with some customized steps that will help you to rank higher. And it's going to look at a bunch of other things, too, like how your site functions across mobile devices. Is it loading at a good pace? This is just one small sample of the data that you're going to get back. All right, so those are some foundational things for establishing your brand and what you can do in Constant Contact. I want to talk more about the tools we have for fundraising. So let's go ahead and I want to put up another poll on the screen here. And I would really love to know how are you all currently collecting donations? Is it just offline only, online only, or maybe you're doing both, both online and offline? So far, I'm seeing both, which is great. Everyone who's answered so far is saying both, but only a few people have voted. All right, 7%, actually 10% now are saying offline. Give everyone just another minute to share their answers with us. And Allison, I see you're in the chat saying both as well. So that's awesome. All right, so we've got 73% of you who've put in your answer. Let's go ahead and uh, close out of that poll. And we'll share the results on the screen so that you can see how all of your peers have voted. So 85% of you are both on and offline. 3% of you are saying online only. And then 12% are saying offline only. So that's about what I expected. Um, I'm assuming probably some of the newer organizations are probably in that offline category. Um, so thank you for sharing the results there. Now, over the past few years, and I'm sure most of you already know this since you voted that way, but more and more people are giving online. For small to medium nonprofits, we're seeing about 13.4% of total fundraising comes from that online giving. So for those of you who may not already be collecting donations online, it's definitely something I'd like for you to consider and that's gonna help you to meet your fundraising goals. We're gonna talk a lot more about email marketing a little bit later on, but within an email campaign, you can simply add a donation block from this left-hand menu, drag it in there, and it's gonna allow you to collect donations right from your emails and it'll give you a couple of other options as well. With the donations tool, you're gonna to be able to create a landing page that looks like this. And uh, you're gonna be able to put in a description of your cause and what you're collecting money for, and let them know why it is they should contribute to your organization and your cause. You'll be able to set things here like your fundraising goal and set a suggested donation amount for them. Now, by the way, this landing page uses WePay in order to process your donations. Now, my favorite thing about this is, especially for that small percent of you who are only collecting off donations offline right now, is that you can extend the reach of your donation campaign. When you publish it, you're going to be able to get a URL for the landing page, and you can share that anywhere. 
share it on your website, and even share the link on social media in order to encourage more people to donate to your cause. And of course, you're gonna be able to see how many people have donated and how much you've raised. When you dive into the reports, you're gonna be able to see who those people are that donated, how much they donated, and also if they're giving to you on a, on a monthly recurring basis. You'll be able to see that in the frequency column there. Now, you could potentially take this list of donors and do a lot of other things with it. But for example, I would suggest adding them to a list so that you can send them a special thank you message and let them know how much their donation means to supporting and ending uh, or, or fixing your cause, ending world hunger or whatever the case may be. Now, another thing I want you to think about is our event tool because events, of course, are a great way to extend your reach and help your cause in a lot of different ways. It could be a 5K, a fun run, some sort of competition, a silent auction that helps you to raise funds, an art show, a gala, or some sort of benefit concert. These types of events are really a great way to help you raise funds and educate people on your cause, which is so important. With the event management tool, it's a really effective way to help you to promote your online and offline events. And it's a much more efficient way for you to capture and track event registrations. And that allows you to get back to actually hosting your event and figuring out all of those other details that you need to. With the tool, you're going to be able to promote your event. That means sending invitations, sending save the dates. And then when you publish your event to start collecting registrations, you're gonna be able to get your event URL and take that and share that in your regular newsletters and on social media to really get the word out. You're gonna be able to collect event registration data 24 seven, and that provides a much smoother registration experience for you and for them. The great thing about this tool is that you're gonna be able to sell items within the, the uh, registration process and you can also allow your invitees the op option to make a donation when they aren't able to attend your event, which I think is pretty cool. And this whole tool is going to allow you to track all of your event detail details, who's coming, who's bringing you guests, and everything like that. Now, I want to take a minute to talk about a few additional tools and things to think about. Because in today's world, many organizations have actually begun developing different revenue streams in order to supplement grants and donations, and they're doing that by opening online stores. So I would like you to use the little hand icon in your GoToWebinar dashboard and tell me, are you already selling items throughout the year that help you to raise funds for your organization? If you are, go ahead and use that hand icon and let me know. Maybe it's a t-shirt that's branded with your organization's name or hats or something along those lines, or maybe even some sort of other good. All right, Allison, I see you raising your hand, Brittany. Okay, so it looks like just a, a small few of you. Now, if you're not already selling items other than your events, Really think about this as a way to sell merchandise, something that's related to your cause or organization. Like I said, it could be branded clothing, which is great because that helps you to drive more awareness and people can walk around in the community just driving awareness about your cause, some sort of other goods, or even eBooks that might help professionals to, or to educate professionals in your field. Now, a bonus for selling items online in an online store like this, means that you're going to be able to collect their email address for future communications and that gives you the ability to influence them and encourage their support. Now ideally when you're setting up an online store like this you'll want to use a platform that integrates with your website and that's something you can do with your constant contact website. Another tool if you're looking to get into selling online quickly is called our shoppable landing page feature. This is a tool that you'll find in your account, but it's really great that helps you get started selling just a few items quickly. This page is super easy to create. It's very similar to when you get familiar with creating an email, but you'll be able to add in the details of your products and features right from within this page. And maybe at the top, you'll wanna to feature why they should buy these items and support your cause that way. The great thing about this shoppable landing page is that when you publish it, you're gonna be able to share it in your emails, your email newsletters, and even on social media to help you get the word out. 
And Linda, I see your question. Can we track fundraising by teams in constant contact? No, I don't believe there's a way to really track fundraising by teams. It just uh, tracks them individually by the individual people who've donated. But that's a great question. So with the Constant Contact online store and shoppable landing pages, you can sell anything from physical products, digital products, and even services. This is the page where you'll come in here and you'll be able to add in your products and the information about them. Add in a little description, change colors, maybe if you're selling t-shirts or hats that have different colors and sizes, and then you can add in images to really feature your products and let people know what they're buying to support you. So we have talked about the foundations that we would like for you to have in place to establish your brand and raise your funds. Let's talk about the tools that really help you to grow your organization in constant contact. When it comes to growing your organization, I always say it's important to know the money is really in your email list. When people willingly give you their email address, they're saying that they do in fact want to hear from you. They're interested in what you have to say and what your cause is about. That means they're more likely to support your cause in the first place. So once you've got the basics set up, especially your website, make sure, again, you're collecting uh, email addresses on there from your supporters and potential clients. And growing your email list is gonna be really important. We've got a few different tools we're gonna walk through here. So like I said before, with our uh, the website builder, if you're using Constant Contact for your website, it's going to automatically have a form on there. What I wanna encourage you to do is click into it and make a few adjustments. I'll give you some tips in a minute. If you're using another website provider, I would still wanna make sure you have a sign up for, form on there as well. I would actually suggest embedding a pop-up form on there and adding it to your site that way. Now the pop-up form is great because you can trigger it to display after a certain amount of time when someone has been on your website or if they go to click and leave your site. And I am sure that we've probably got at least one person in the audience who's gonna tell me you hate pop-ups. We all really hate pop-ups in a way. The thing is that people don't like being interrupted by anything that doesn't provide them value. So on your pop-up, you wanna offer something of value in return for their email address. Let them know what they're getting into and how they're supporting you. People for nonprofits are gonna sign up to get exclusive content and to simply show their support for your organization. So when you're creating your forms, whether it's on your constant contact website or any other form you're creating, make sure you choose to put whatever it is on your form. Let them know the value they're gonna get from being on your email list. Please don't just leave it as join our mailing list. That's not the most effective way to actually get people on your list. Now for the pop-up form example, like we see here, you're gonna be able to make a few edits like your, your title, your description and your text fields. Choose the fields of information you wanna collect from your subscribers. Change some design elements. I usually say to pick one color from your branding, usually a darker color, and then use that same color on the title text as well as the button text. Then you're gonna publish the form and you'll wanna make sure to install the form on your website. And when you click to do that, we actually walk you through that. We've got step-by-step -step instructions for a lot of different website providers. We also have what are called lead generation landing pages that help you to grow your list. This is the example we see here on the left. A lead generation landing page is a standalone page that you're gonna be able to add your logo to add a bit of design, and then choose the fields of the information you wanna collect. When you publish this, you're gonna be able to share it in a variety of places and encourage people to sign up to your list. One of the most popular ways that I'm seeing people use this is to take the link you're gonna get from publishing it and share it on social media. Encourage your followers to sign up to your mailing list. The other tool I wanna to mention is called text to join and that's this example here on the right. Just a little bit about how it works is in your account, you'll go in, you'll create a keyword, something that has to do with your organization's name or your cause. And when you do that, you're gonna get a phone number back. Use that keyword and phone number to create a sign and then really post it anywhere. It's great for any place you're interacting with people and even at your physical events. Your supporters will see that sign and they're gonna text that keyword to that phone number. Then they're gonna get a message asking for their email address. They put in their email address 
and then they're going to get a thank you message from you. This is so easy for you to set up. It only takes a couple of minutes, but it's even easier for your contacts to sign up as well because they're already carrying around their smartphone. I want to point out that we also try to make all of your marketing efforts as simple as possible. And that's why we integrate with hundreds of integrations that you'll find right with, from within your account. You can easily sync your supporter information right within Constant Contact to upload your list of contacts and do a variety of other things. Some examples of tools we integrate with are DonorPerfect, Neon, and Zapier. Zapier is another tool that actually connects to hundreds of other more hundreds of even more tools out there. Plus, you're gonna be able to find more integrations that help you to grow your list. For example, if you were to go to the, the list building uh, option on the left-hand side of the screen, you can find an app for your smartphone tablet or your tablet or your smartphone. And if you're out an event or maybe you're net networking with people in the community, you can have people enter their email address right there when you're talking to them. So a lot of different options there. When you're thinking about your contacts and your marketing, eventually you're gonna to wanna to improve your results. And this is where I wanna make sure that you start to think about segmenting your list. It's a question I get all of the time. Well, how do I get better results, get more people to open, more people to click? Well, segmenting and sending targeted information is one of the best ways to do that. And if you're not familiar with segmenting, maybe some of you who are just getting started with your organization, it really just means splitting your contacts into smaller groups of like contacts that allow you to send more relevant content and information based on their interests and who you're really talking to. There's a variety of ways you can split your list and segment. First off is demographic information. That's gonna be things you know about them like their age, their gender or marital status, if that applies to your organization for any reason. Geography, that can be great if you are using those tools to sell online and maybe you wanna offer free local pickup. And also great if you're having events in different cities or locations. For that, you might think about segmenting based off of the city, state, zip code, or even the country where it's applicable to you. One of my favorite ways though, is to actually segment based off of your subscribers' behaviors. That's like where they click within an email or the donations they make. You could segment based off of the interests you know about them, like those who've shown interest in volunteering with your organization, if they've donated in the past, or even take it a bit further in the type of donor. If they're a really important donor, a VIP donor to you, or maybe they haven't donated in the past that's gonna allow you to craft your messaging to make those people feel special. You wanna catch people's attention and encourage them to continue to support you. One example I like to say here is someone who hasn't donated is likely to require completely different information and triggers in order to get them to donate than someone who's been a valued donor for years. In Constant Contact, we've got, we've got a variety of tools that allow you to segment your list. And my favorite is actually this click segmentation tool that we see right here. This automatically segments people based on where they click in your email. All you have to do is go in and create links and then turn on the feature. Check the box to enable click segmentation. And then when they click, you're gonna wanna choose a list for those people to be added into. You can choose an existing list or you can create a new list right from that screen. It's kind of like magic. Another way you might, might segment is with this segments feature that you'll find under, under the contacts tab. Now in here, we've got pre-built segments that allow you to easily find and send emails to who your most engaged contacts are, if they're just somewhat engaged or your least engaged contacts, and you can do it in just a few simple clicks. For example, you might wanna reward your most engaged customer or contacts with a thank you message and a piece of exclusive information that's gonna make them feel extra special so that they continue engaging with you. You can also use this segments tool to create more specific groups based on details that you know about them. You'll be able to create customized segments based on all this information you see here. So for example, you could segment based on their activity or lack thereof if they belong to certain lists in your account or any contact details, again, city, state, zip code, 
or even if there's any custom field information that you have stored in your account about them. Use that information to create a really specific segment. Once you've gotten your contacts, you're growing your list, that's when you wanna start communicating with them via email. Some of those emails you are gonna to wanna to automate. And first and foremost, we're gonna suggest that you create a welcome ser series of emails um, that start sending and start your relationship off on the right foot. We recommend sending a series of two emails here. And so let's walk through what each of those should be. Email one is where you wanna say, thank you for signing up. Remember on your forms that you are enticing people to sign up with, let them know the value. So if you're exchanging maybe an ebook for their email address on dog training their newly adopted dog, fulfill that offer right within this email. Also in this email, you wanna set their expectations, when you're gonna be sending, how often, and what information they'll be receiving in the future. Email two of your welcome series is where you wanna invite them to connect with you. For many of you, this is a great way to grow your social following. You can simply add in links to all of your social channels and encourage, just make the message about them joining and following you there. You might also want to include some information if uh, they have questions about your organization or maybe they want to make a special donation or get involved somehow. So that could be where you include your organization's phone number or even email address. This is just an example of what it looks like to set up email automation. You can set up one or a whole series of emails that trigger once someone takes a desired action. One of those actions is joining the email list like in this welcome series. Then you're gonna be able to choose a timing in between each email and then add as many emails to the series as you need to. Again, these emails are gonna be automatically sent once someone takes that first desired action. And then each email will continue sending at the interval that you choose. The great thing with this stuff is that you can just kind of set it and forget it and focus on other areas of your marketing and your organization. Beyond that, those pieces of automation, we have what are called date-based automated birthday and anniversary emails. These send automatically in relation to uh, someone's birthday or anniversary date. You can choose up to 14 days before those dates. Now, these emails are great because you can make your supporters feel special. And I especially like this example here on the right for the Gifford Cat Shelter. It's just a simple yearly reminder after the adoption and letting them know how important adopting is to the community and the cause. All of these types of automated emails that we've talked about here can really help you to nurture relationships and stay top of mind with your audiences. Plus, you're gonna be able to save yourself a lot of time, which I know is a limited resource for most of you. We also have our tool that allows you to send one-off emails, and that means you'll be able to create and send your email that sends on a specific date. By the way, when it comes to your email strategy, think about sending promotional information. Promotional is your fundraising and your events, but also make sure you're including that non-promotional information in there as well. You'll wanna provide value with those non-promotional emails, and that's gonna be where you share success, you can share volunteer stories, educate your audience about your cause, and simply keep your audience up to date. Now, especially when you really want your audience to do something, the promotional emails, I want to encourage you to really think about sending them as one email with only that one topic. That way your audience won't be distracted by anything else in your emails and you can really make it the focus and get more people to take action. But I also know that you're gonna to wanna to send newsletters. And you can include that promotion for your fundraiser or event or your call for volunteers in that regular newsletters as well. There's a few special tips that I, I would suggest in that case. I would put your promotion at the top with a sort of personal letter to draw people in and encourage them to take that action. And then include any other topics down below that. A few other things I wanna encourage you to think about is that even if your first post or your first block is not just about a promotion, make sure you're adding a special intro, add in some personality that connects with your audience. That might mean it's a short story with the theme of the information in your newsletter. Maybe it's some sort of commentary that pulls your audience in. Really show them why the information in this email, this newsletter is valuable to them. 
It's also important to keep your newsletters to three topics at most. I want you to remember that people tend to scan information first, so you've got to make it easy for people to consume what it is you're sending. You want to keep your emails inviting, and that means no huge blocks of text. So even with your newsletters, think about keeping it simple and focused. Now, if you have more information on that, you want to think about sending more often rather than stuffing it all into one email. Because if you're putting in more than three topics, those other topics are not likely to get the information or the attention that it deserves from your subscribers. The reader is gonna get more value from your email and you're actually gonna benefit from sending on a higher frequency. The caveat though, as long as you're sending information that's relevant to the people who are receiving it. A little story here is I once helped a customer, they had such a long email that if anyone had printed it out for any reason, it would have turned out to be 16 pages long. You are rarely gonna find someone who's gonna read through that much information in your email, so please, please keep it brief. With that, it's also a good idea to write a brief intro to each topic and use a read more button or link that'll link to the rest of the information somewhere else. It could be a PDF that you upload and uh, link to within Constant Contact, or you could be linking to it on your website or a blog post on your website. That, doing that is also really valuable because then you're going to be able to better track your subscribers' interests based on where they're clicking in your email and segment your list. That's where that click segmentation feature comes in again here. It's a great way to segment your list because knowing what people are interested in is going to be huge in improving your strategy and your results. Now our email editor is really easy to use. You'll start by picking a template and that's gonna be fully customizable. We have a variety of nonprofit templates, layouts, event invitations, and even newsletter formats. You'll be able to just perform a search at the top and then find a template that you can start with. That template, by the way, is gonna be fully customizable. Now from the template picker page, you're gonna also have the option to use our branded template builder. This is going to give you a head start on branding your template, and that is always something we recommend to make sure your organization is easily recognizable from your emails. If you attend any other webinar or read a blog post on email marketing, that's usually something we're going to talk about. But this tool works by you're going to start by inputting your website, and it's going to pull in a lot of options and colors and things like that for you to save yourself some time. On this next page, you're gonna be able to choose your options. If you have different versions or images of your logo, you'll be able to scroll through those options. You can then choose a layout that you like, and then you can add, adjust the colors if for some reason they didn't pull in correctly. You can change that and also add in your social media elements and links. Really, this is just a great starting point for you to customize your email. Once you choose a template, it's really easy to customize it. You've got this click and drag editor. We saw a little bit about it before, but you can click and drag any element from this left-hand column and drag it into your email. For any blocks that are already existing, you can click and drag, move them up or down or left or right if you wanna wrap text around an image or if you wanna create a block that maybe has two columns. We've also got these action blocks that you'll see in this left-hand menu. We already talked about the donation action block for raising funds, but if you're hosting your events through Eventbrite, you can connect your events and pull them into your email. You can use the RSVP block if you just want to collect a simple headcount of people that can make it to your event. There's a poll block that allows you to easily get, get information on a question that you want to ask your readers. And then if you click the More button under the Action Blocks, there's what's called a Read More block. This is really great for creating your newsletter templates because you can take a page on your website or a blog post that you wanna feature in your newsletter, put in a link to it, and it's going to pull in that short snippet of information with a read more link and an image. It's really simple and an easy way for you to create your email campaigns. For the email reporting, you're gonna be able to dive into your results and see who might you wanna follow up with. You can use this information to further segment your email list as well. For email reporting, you'll be able to see who opens, clicks, opt-outs, and more. But I really want to suggest that you think beyond just your opens and clicks. 
because that's going to tell you more effectively how your email campaign efforts are impacting your organization over what, overall. So pay attention to things like your website traffic. Are more people going to your website? Are you getting more engagement on your social media? Are you getting more donations? Are people actually volunteering when you're asking them to? We also have our survey tool, and this allows you to learn a lot more about your audience because surveys can be used to improve communication between you and the members of your community. Surveys can help you to learn valuable information about your donors, your clients, and your volunteers. For example, you could use a client satisfaction survey to help you to refine your programs in order to better meet their needs. You could use volunteer surveys because of course you wanna make sure those people feel really valued and keep coming back to help your organization. Donor surveys could be used to refine your outreach strategy and help you to develop longer lasting relationships. You could ask for feedback from new and even returning donors. You could even use a survey to gain feedback from your lapsed donors because you'll wanna understand why they've stopped giving and ask about their uh, a potential future involvement with your organization. Not to mention, you can also use a survey to just simply ask people what it is they want to receive in your email campaigns, what it is they want to learn about you or your cause. Think about surveys as not just a once a year check in with your audience, but as a constant means of engaging them and actually bringing them into the conversation. Now, with all of these tools that we've talked about so far, social media can and should be tying into them. I've talked about it a few times. We have some great tools that allow you to easily integrate social media into your overall marketing strategy. And by the way, we suggest that you post regularly on social media. And depending on the channels you use and your organization's goals, that can mean you post anywhere from once a day to once a week. The thing to remember here is to post consistently and don't try to spread yourself too thin. Don't try to be on every single channel. Really focus your efforts and post quality content over the quantity of content. So on your social media channels, we suggest that you focus in three areas. Drive awareness of your organization. Pay attention to engagement. Are people engaging with your posts? Are they asking questions? And then also creating posts that drive action to learn more about your cause, to donate to your cause, to volunteer. You can build your following for social media by including links in all of your social to your social channels within your emails. Most people will do it at the bottom. Don't forget you can use it to promote your events. That means also sharing your email campaigns, your regular newsletters, but also to grow your email list. That's a great place to share that lead generation landing page that I talked about earlier. Really anything that's gonna be helpful and educational is something that you should also be share, sharing on there. And if you start to sell items to help you to raise more money for your cause, um, put that information out there as well and just let them know how they can further support you. Here's just an example of what it looks like to uh, post to all of your social channels right from within Constant Contact. It's really gonna save you a lot of time. You're gonna be able to post and schedule messages to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn right from within Constant Contact. And this tool is gonna allow you to schedule your posts. And by the way, you can create what are called variations. Because one thing I say all the time is don't post the exact same thing on every single one of these channels. They all have their own personality and features and the audience on those channels is a little bit different as well. What I suggest you do is to create posts with a general theme and then modify them to fit each channel. So if you wanna add in a video to a specific one, add in more hashtags for Twitter and Instagram, you can do that all from this, this page. Another great part about this is remember a minute ago when I was talking about how you want to pay attention to engagement and questions you're getting on social. Well, the social inbox allows you to monitor those conversations and actually respond to them right here from this page. You can click this little icon and you'll be able to go in and manage all those conversations and stay on top of it. I'm not going to spend too much time on this next one, but I do want to mention that we have tools for Google and Facebook and Instagram ads because these help you to add a little fuel to the fire once you've got all of those foundational elements set up like your social and your email and your website. 
Online ads like these are really going to allow you to reach new audiences and grow your organization. Now, with these ads, you could drive actions like making a donation, registering for your events, or simply educating people with a resource about your cause. For example, we also have what are called lead ads on Facebook and Instagram, and these will help you to target people, let's say, in your local area and get them on your email list, which is pretty cool. So at this point, we've talked about all of the important tools that help you to establish your brand, raise funds, and ultimately grow your organization. So as we start to wrap up and we're going to get to all of these great questions that are coming in, I just want to recap some of the big tools and stra strategical things to think about. If you don't already have a logo, make sure you have one because it's the cornerstone of your brand. It plays into everything we've talked about today. And if you've had a logo for a while, now may actually be the time to revamp your brand with a new logo. At least poll your existing supporters and volunteers and, and see what their thoughts are on it. Because once you have a logo, you want to make sure you're using it everywhere, especially online, so that people recognize you when they open your website or open an email campaign. It needs to be recognizable all over all of those channels. It's also important to make sure you're setting up a mobile responsive website because your website should be a resource for potential clients and supporters. And it should serve as a home base for all of your marketing activities. And that's because you should be linking back to it from all of those other channels and efforts. Now, your website is just one of those places you should be collecting email addresses. So simply add a sign up form, something like this, because once people fill it out, that's gonna give you the ability to influence them later on, ask for their support. When you're working to raise funds, you can collect donations online. I know most of you already are, but if you're needing another avenue, that's great. Or if you just need help uh, collecting donations online for the first time. You might also consider selling items online to help you raise additional funds um, and really drive awareness of your organization. Plus, you've got the events tool. For those of you, I'm sure most of you are running events already, but really add some power to help you raise those funds and even drive event attendance with constant contact. Once you're collecting those leads and contacts, I really want to encourage you to start communicating with them right away. And this is where you can use those automated emails to welcome new contacts. There's that two email series that we suggest. You'll also want to incorporate those one-off emails in order to educate your audience and promote your events. And then you've got those fundraising campaigns as well that you want to be promoting. And a combination of these types of emails in your strategy and the information in there, that's really going to allow you to show your expertise and just keep people informed without simply asking for donations all of the time. Don't forget about social media. This can be used to help you save time in constant contact, but think about creating those posts and paying attention to things like the questions that people are asking, and also create those posts that drive awareness and drive action right from within uh, your social media. And last but not least, you've got social and Google ads that really help you to reach your ideal target audience. That's my favorite thing about using ads is you've got really great targeting power. You could drive people to your website where the, you can collect their information. You can drive them to donate to your cause or use that lead ad to simply grow your email list. You have a lot of options to accomplish whatever goal you have. Now, we have a couple of different packages that you can choose from and you might choose depending on where you're starting at. Now, all of the tools we've, di we've discussed today are in the right package, the Email Plus package, and it starts at $45 a month. Now, the pricing for the Email and the Email Plus packages, this is going to be based on the number of active contacts that you've uploaded into your account. So if you have anywhere from zero to 500, you're gonna be at this starting price on the screen. We also offer nonprofits. We've got the, the discounts at the bottom there, but it's 20% off if you prepay for six months and 30% off if you prepay for 12 months. In order to set that up and get the discount, you just need to send us your 501c3 or six if you're in the US or some sort of equivalent type of documentation if you're in another country. I'll have Rachel share a link in the chat window. So if you wanna see a breakdown of all of these features that are available and the pricing. 
Right under each package on that page that Rachel is sharing, you'll be able to view the tiered pricing. So if you've got more than 500 contacts, you'll be able to see that information right there on that screen. And if you don't already, I would encourage you to start a free trial of Constant Contact so that you can really explore all of the tools we've talked about today. Rachel will share a link to that in the questions window. Before we get to q and I know we've got tons of great questions here. I want to let you know that we are here to help. We've got tons of helpful resources and even more webinars to help you get the most out of your online marketing efforts. We've also got some paid services if you need help and uh, really allow you to get the customized level of help that you need. So one more thing before questions, when we end the webinar today, a survey is gonna pop up on your screen and I'd really love it if you take just a minute or two to answer two simple questions and let us know what you thought about the webinar today. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So I see Diana is asking, we have a website, so wouldn't build it or alter it on constant contact. So we wouldn't be able to have any tracking of people coming to it. Um, no, your whatever website builder or platform you're using, they should already be tracking that information. So you would want to explore whatever the, the tool is. They've probably got some help FAQs out, out there to help you to find that information, but it should already be tracking it for you. Great question. Uh, Linda asks, can we track fundraising by teams in constant contact? No, uh, there's no way to do that at this time. It's just going to track the individual information on who has donated. So Blair asks, what is an ideal number of words or sentences in each section of an email with three topics? So there's no black or white answer, I would say, to this, but I would say, you know, two or three sentences that allow you to intro it. You want to give just enough of an intro that's going to pique their interest in the topic that they're going to click to read more to. So it's, you know, make sure it's like the most important information if you're going to write it out. I would say probably five sentences at the very most, um, but I would try to stick on, on the lower side of that. Let's see, Sarah asks, does the Google Ads tool work for websites that aren't created through constant contact? Yes, absolutely. You can create uh, ads no matter where your website is created. You'll just be able to go in and create, put in the link to your existing site and it'll basically give you the starting point for the ad that you're going to create. Great questions. Linda, I see your question. Will you be sending a link to the recording of this seminar? Yep, we will be sending it. It usually takes a little bit to process after we close out of the session today, usually by the end of today, but by the end of tomorrow at the very latest is when it'll send. So I see Charlotte asks, I would like training on constant contact. The person that used to manage our constant contact is no longer here. Is there a number I can call for training or assistance? So let me first pull up. Webinars are a great option for you, but there's also a phone number, which Rachel, you're helping behind the scenes. If you might be able to put in that phone number and share it so everybody has it. Uh, we have a wonderful support team that can help you uh, with anything as well. So I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to make sure I'm sharing the URL if you want more training for webinars. We've got tons of webinars out here in our schedule. If I can get it to send here. Let me try this. My screen is frozen. I can get it to unfreeze for me. Sorry about that, everyone. All right, I'm just waiting for this to cooperate. There we go. All right, uh, so Jessica asks, can you give a quick recap of where to go to create a donor survey? So when you're in your account, 
you'll see a create button. If you go, if you're on the main page, you'll see it as well, but you'll be able to go to the campaigns tab at the top and click create. Surveys will be the option that shows up in there. And then that will give you the option to go in and start creating your survey, but it's pretty simple to do. Fryer asks, what are suggestions for KPIs when creating a communication strategy that heavily depends on constant contact, specifically tracking donations? So I would really track the number of donations and depending on what your goal is with your donations, if you're just simply trying to raise more money or if you're trying to even get more people to uh, be on recurring donations monthly, pay attention to things like that. You'll wanna look for those things outside of constant contact. That's really, really where you should be getting the bulk of your data. I mean, opens and clicks are kind of vanity metrics. They'll tell you a little bit, but your donations and things like that outside of constant contact is really, really where you're gonna get the meat and potatoes of it. So Ellen asks, does constant contact automatically resize social media images? Uh, I think the way that it works, Ellen, you might want to give our support team a call, um, uh, but they can tell you for sure. But I believe it's just going to crop it if you're using the social posting tool, depending on, you know, if it's too big, it's going to kind of fit it right within that proper window. So I guess in a way, uh, yes, but I would just double check with our support team to, to make sure. All right, we've got a couple of minutes left. Chris, I see your question about the, um, the EIN is a, as an acceptable proof of a 501c3. I am not 100% sure on that. If you're outside of the US, that will probably work as long as it's something that shows you are a nonprofit. Um, but if it's if you're in the US, it'll want to be that 501c3 or 6. I'm trying to get my computer to scroll through all of these other questions I have here. So Mary asks, I started with constant contact long before I got on board with Donor Perfect, but I was told I would have to set up a new constant contact and that my first one wouldn't transfer over. Is that true? So I don't know why. So when you connect your donor perfect with constant contact, it should all just be pulling in there. So I'm not sure I'm fully understanding the question, but all you have to do is go in there and connect it. You shouldn't have to create a whole new constant contact account. You'll just go to the integrations tab and then you'll be able to find that integration with Donor Perfect. All right, we've got time for about one or two more questions. Chris asks, what do you consider a successful open rate and click rate? Any suggestions for getting them up? So segmentation is going to be one of those big things. Um, you can also play around with different subject lines, especially as a nonprofit in that subject line, make sure you're pulling at their heartstrings. And we actually have an FAQ, if I can get my system to work, that actually tells you what the, um, the average open rates are for all time or for all different types of businesses and nonprofits. Usually it's anywhere from about 15 to 25% and I'm not sure where nonprofits fall, but I can pull that up. We've got our FAQ database that you'll be able to access right from within your constant contact account and I'll just pull it up from right there. Lots of tutorial videos and things like that.
So we've got this chart here and we'll look for the nonprofits. So nonprofits for open rates, usually about 23%. So if you're somewhere in that area or that range, I think you're doing pretty good. And then click rates at 15.31%. So like I said, play around with your different subject lines, play around with even different send times that can really impact it. And then of course, segmenting your list and sending more relevant information can impact your, your open rates as well. Really get that engagement up. All right, I think we've got time for one more question here. Blair says, FYI, your phone so support is incredible and the reason I use Constant Contact, please don't automate the support as a real person experience is your different differentiation. Well, thank you. That's uh, That goes to what I said a little bit earlier. Our support team is really great. They can help you if you need uh, a little bit of hand-holding, getting started. Um, it really speaks to you, know, you saying that as a customer. So we definitely appreciate that. And working here, I would say that is definitely true. So we are at the top of the hour. Um, I will go through all these questions and see if we got through all of them. If we didn't, I'll find a way to follow up with you. Depending on how many there are, I may include them in a link in the follow-up email later today, and then we'll have to spend a few extra days over the coming business days to answer those. But I'll include the link in there. If it's just a few of you, I'll, uh, I'll communicate with you all individually. Again, the link to the recording is going to be sent out most likely by the end of today, so be on the lookout for that, as well as the resources we've shared and talked about today. So I want to thank you all for attending our webinar today for nonprofits, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and best of luck as we head in towards the end of the year and, and the fundraising season. Have a great day. Bye now.